you go back to marriage in the 40s, you did not give a diamond ring. A market was created, customer behavior was changed, that you cannot get engaged without a diamond. Hello, John. Thanks for joining us. I did want to dig a little bit, maybe in, into, into sustainability first, because I, I think it, it, it probably sits in, in that space of like purpose, mm -hmm. which is kind of often a, mm -hmm. a, a, a recurring theme. Yep. But I'm, I'm always interested in, in organizations that are, have, a, have a purpose at the heart, but also how do you like galvanize the whole organization behind a purpose? Yes, I mean, EY uh, is purpose building a better working world, and it's been a huge galvanizing driving force. You know, if you look at our overall growth, if you look at our people engagement, having a strong purpose is, is very powerful. You know, we've got the data behind it to, to, to show its effect. I think it also ensures then that you're doing all the right things at the right time. So sustainability clearly is a massive issue alongside other things, you know, social equity, all of, you know, all of the, the, the critical drivers of change essential to the world. I think sustainability, you know, we are, you know, we went out about you know, three years ago with a strong commitment from ourselves, but also building partnerships around the world in terms of how to affect change. And, you know, we talk about value-led sustainability, the fact that, you know, at a business level, there's an imperative to do it for future generations, otherwise we will not have a planet to serve. Yeah. Equally, future competitive advantage is going to come from those organizations that actually embrace it. Because we know from, I don't think we need the stats, you know, we know from our own EY data, close to 70% of consumers are saying they want brands and businesses to do more. So it's, it's a driver of future growth in the business, as well as it will have to shift the way society operates. And so it's, it's I, I guess it, it, it feels like it's something that's not just the sole responsibility of the marketing team. Like it has to impact the whole business. How, how do you kind of spread it through the organization? Yes, yeah, so I mean, it's a good question about marketing. You know, what's marketing's role? And um, I was at the WFA event a couple of, a few weeks ago where the question was posed, do you change the company or do you reframe the way customers think about it? And it was an interesting debate. I wish I'd asked that question. It was a great, it was a great question. And, and, you know, in advocating for consumer change, there's a uh -huh. fantastic lady from uh, Oxford, uh, the sustainability practice, who said, if you go back to marriage in the 40s, you did not give a diamond ring. You then go, a market was created, you, the customer behavior was changed that you cannot get engaged without diamond. And if you apply that to sustainability, you go, how can marketers reframe the choices you make? How can you actually start making people make better choices? So there's a, undoubtedly an issue. Having said that, organizations, businesses have to create new solutions, new packaging solutions, new ways of engaging. And then you can go very macro around it, which is what, how do you chase value? What's future value? What's growth in the future? Is it the circular economy? Uh, I don't know if you've heard about the donut economics uh, yes. area around yeah. moving from growth to thriving. So, you know, it's, a, it's an end-to-end -end systemic shift in the world. And, we, you know, we kind of say it's everybody's business, okay? In the boardroom, it's the top, and it's going to come from the bottom up. Picking up on it, it's kind of connected. I sort of remember November 2022, I was minding my own business. Next thing, I'm on this thing called ChatGBT. And like uh, generative AI is the only thing that seems to be talked about. Um, but I, I, I'm assuming, obviously, as EY, this is not a new thing to you as an organisation. <laughs> AI is not new. You know, we, you know, we spend, uh, you know, millions have been invested in using AI across pretty much all of our services, all of our solutions. So AI is not the new thing. In fact, AI has been for many years. What is transformative is Gen AI. It's a game changer. It's, it's um, you know, as described to me from our chief technology officer, you're going from a predictive model that says this happens there to something is actually, you know, you don't know always the answer, okay? And so it's a game changer. It's not a fad. I think, you know, it's not here this year and gone tomorrow. I think, you know, what we know is it's gonna affect pretty much every business and every function within a business is gonna change. Exponential transformation. So what do you do with that in every part of the business? And then I think the bit that we feel very strongly, which does go back to purpose, is around human impact. And so when you have a strong purpose like building a better working world, you kind of go, how do we put humans at the center of this? And it's a big part of our consulting practice. We know that we've done some research, actually, which says if you put humans at the center of transformation, real people at the center of it, 
your outcomes are better and your transformation is more successful. So I think you know, fundamentally, trust, you know, exponential transformation, and then human impact is somewhere where we've all got to navigate through to. It's interesting that that picks up on, I guess, a theme that, that or a conversation I've been having with people around generative AI, where it, it is the idea and the human aspect is the idea that it, it's, if we start to look at it as a tool for humans, yeah. then actually suddenly there's the fear disappears and yeah. it's something that you can use. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, in, you know, it is about augmenting. Yeah. And yes, there is fear. And clearly, you know, there is a need for regulation. There is a need to actually, you know, sort the copyright issues out. You know, you, you know all of those are real issues, which will be sorted, I hope, fast. Yeah. Um, but it is about augmenting, you know, for either at an efficiency level where you go from a talent point of view, you can actually be freed up to do some inter the interesting part as opposed to not. Um, and then, you know, in some ways, democratizing creativity isn't a bad thing. The creative economy, throwing it out there, you can have, I saw an amazing presentation today by a brand where they have actually thrown their brand out using generative AI. People have created images and they've re reused that content. So I think it's, it, you know, on a good day, this is going to unleash new ways of engaging, yeah. which is exciting. Clearly, there's a downside that has to be managed through. Now, partly connected to AI, and I'll make, it'll make sense in a second, but I, I've always uh, been an admirer, and this professionally, of, of your uh, advertising um, and, and the line, better questions. Right? And, and the reason I, I kind of bring it up in, in the air is because obviously, are how we interact with with a lot of, sort of the generative AI models is that we have to yeah. ask questions of it and make suggestions. So it, it, it feels like somehow you saw this coming. Yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could say I saw better <laughs> questions in AI when we first created the Better Questions campaign. But you know, fundamentally, in fact, I was on a call yesterday with our global head of talent who said, isn't this the moment around better questions to double down on it? And I said, absolutely, because the, the prompt, the way you ask a question will get a radically different answer. So we're all going to actually have to get even more skilled around a better question. Um, and so, you know, in some ways, we've had the better the question, the better the answer, the better the world works. Yeah. It's probably the better the question, the better the prompt, the better the outcome. <laughs> so, so I think, I think it's come of age. In fact, we just did um, a very interesting. It was published in Harvard uh, between um, an MIT professor, Hal Grigerson, who's written about the power of questions, and we've collaborated on various things and our chief technology officer who, who basically, it was all about inquiry and how questions and AI are gonna be deeply entwined in the future. So your, your question is great to hear about the advertising, but actually in a profound way, better questions is, is sort of come out, in some ways come of age. I, it's, it's funny, I, I used to talk to junior uh, strategists about the power of asking why. Yes. And like every time you ask why and you get yeah. deeper and deeper and it, it's the most simplest of questions, but yeah, it, it unlocks solutions. It is because most of us want to say what the answer is very yes. quickly. Yeah. In fact, Hal, Hal Grigerson's got this thing about the question verse where he forces you not to speak other than listen to the other person's question. It's only the questions you can do before you get to solving it. So drawing on that, I, I um, thinking about kind of a world powered by or, or driven by a, a, AI um, data and um, how we collect it, how we use it. I, 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 I'm always fascinated about kind of how organizations are, are utilizing data. I mean, look, data is a, is a primary source of what we do yeah. at, at EY. I think along, along with the data becomes all the protections and how we are responsible about it. I think, you know, as you know, one of the biggest challenges with sort of the open version of, of um, generative AI is you're putting out your content into the world. So there will be a degree of complete open source and then people building their own platforms within using it so that you can actually protect your own data. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, all, all of the old truths about data being, you know, the liquid, uh, the liquid gold or the liquid oil of the future, it it's absolutely is, right? Exactly. I, I, um, the, the one thing I, I always wonder, though, is, is there a, a tension between sort of data and, and creativity? Like, how, how do you kind of have the two live together? You know, it, it's an interesting question. In fact, I raised it earlier saying I still think there's a data creativity gap in terms of understanding how to take the data and the insight and how that may, may or not lead to a creative solution. 
Um, and I think for now, if you look at creativity being about making connections between different inputs, you know, whether it's a data piece, whether it's a societal issue, your brand, somewhere the connection points lead to a creative solution. That's the imagination. The, the data somehow can spark a thought. But to this day, that next leap is still a human act activity. And I think where AI will play a very powerful role, it's almost like a, a fast brainstorming. Certainly for now, who knows in the future. But for now, it's a radically fast way of brainstorming ideas around, um, and then you know the human mind can take it to the next level. Well, picking up on the theme of humans, this is my very still, tenuous still. link here. <laughs> um, but I, 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 you're a B, you, you know, you're a B two B advertiser, and so you, when you think about audiences, you obviously think about your audience through a very particular sort of business lens. Mm -hmm. But I always find that like there is a um, a reality between there's, there's people as business people and the people as just humans. So how do you kind of go about like thinking about your audience and finding opportunities to to, to engage them? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. I, you know, because I work at EY, I'm now seen as a B2B marketer. I mean, most of my life is consumer. Uh -huh. And I often say the reason I probably was able to add new value into the system is because I don't think there's a separation. I think it's human to human, right? So B2B is human to human. And therefore, like anything, you are connecting with someone's emotions, okay? So what's the value exchange? So, you know, if you look at it as a top level, a better question where your audience can't get to the answer is adding value. So if you think about the value exchange, they're human beings, and by the way, we're all emotion. If, if there's a lot of data that says B2B is a far more emotive decision, okay? If you pick a packet of detergent, if you get it wrong, you know, it's okay. If you pick the wrong, you know, partner, Okay. Okay. Your career is at stake, yes. right? So it's a very, very powerfully emotive decision. Yeah. Um, so human to human is the way I'd look at it. And I, I don't see a separate... There are tactics that are different between B2C and B2B. But in terms of the way you think, so what's the insight behind the audience? What, can I, what value can I create to them in, in the exchange? I, I, it's, it's, in, it's sort of like a... I, I like that human to human because it's... I mean, the other way is B2B becomes kind of B2Me, like right? the, yeah. the holistic... Yeah. Me and yeah. my ambitions and all that. And it's really, you, you, yeah, that that, that yeah. emotion and decision, you're right? It's it's wrapped up in the whole yeah. career, your whole career, else. your livelihood, your family. Looking forward, like to like the next two years or even beyond. Like what 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 kind of what are you excited about, or, or maybe even nervous about? I, I have to say, I'm excited by AI, right? Because it's a big, meaty challenge. Okay, it's complex. It's got legal frameworks, societal issues. It's got implications for people's roles at work. I mean, it's a profound shift. And having said that, I think probably people on the whole that go into marketing or advertising or any form of creative industry actually love meaty big problems to work through. And so I think that's exciting. It's a bit like sustainability, yes. right? We need to do it. And I actually think this industry, this collection of people actually holds a massive part of the answer. So in some ways, it's a moment in time where you go creatively, the world needs us more than ever. And that's fun. I love that perspective. This idea that like, actually the, the problem, like you run to yeah. the problem because you, that's you do. where yeah. innovation lies and growth. Yeah, exactly. Brilliant. But you know, it's not without its challenges <laughs> for the world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.